Hello, Honors 410. Uh, I'm going to try to keep today's video lecture relatively abbreviated in, in large part because these days when we have the uh, flash cluster sharing as well, I want to make sure that I'm giving you all adequate time to, to read those carefully and respond to them in the discussion thread. Uh, mostly because, you know, we're really putting ourselves out there when we share our creative work. And so I want to make sure that that's getting it, its due rewards, uh, not just in terms of comments from, from me, but I think uh, being able to discuss each other's work is one of the most fruitful parts of this exercise. So. Um, everyone did a great job with this in our, our first go around, but I just wanted to offer a reminder that um, we're aiming to keep these positive, and so um, you know, keep keeping the discussions, um, you know, mostly towards you know positive feedback. Um, some questions or suggestions around what, where the piece might go next, if it seems as though it's kind of more of a cliffhanger, or uh, if you'd be interested in more, that that can be fair game here in part because um, some students might choose to you know use these as a leaping off point for their um their, their workshop drafts later on in the semester but in general though again it's kind of keeping the 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 conversation mostly positive and keeping the discussion focused on you know what's working in pieces and what we might be able to take from them and apply to our own work uh, is a great place for these to go so for today's class discussion um I, i'm gonna focus otherwise just on the, the last leg of yellow and uh we're gonna have um the live discussion session which by depending on when you watch this um, may well, actually no for this class it's not until tomorrow so so definitely uh, I, I expect most of you will probably have seen this video before that happens uh, some of you might might not though some of you might be watching this later but regardless um, we'll, we'll kind of handle you a little bit more holistically there as well if people would like to discuss that but we, there's certainly some space for that um, now that we've tied all the pieces together if there are pieces you're kind of biting your tongue that you wanted to connect from earlier on in the novella as well uh, feel free to bring those into this discussion or again if you want to talk about those in real time when we have our um, um, live discussion that that's a good space for that as well um, but okay so for today's class though I want to start um, page 235 here um, towards the top we get this transition from Danny to Daniel I'm just gonna read that very first sentence there um, in part three Danny or Daniel as he called himself now liked the case method at Harvard Business School and by and large he was impressed by his section mates um, so this might be, you know, too obvious of a question in some ways, but I think it's a, it's a transition that's notable enough that it's worth at least briefly discussing. This transition from Danny to Daniel, what, what we make of that, what, what that means, what that represents about the character that he's chosen to, to change the way he represents himself in that way. Um, jumping ahead here a little bit, from, from 238 to 239, um, we, we get some of this, um, I, I'm just going to, in some ways, oversimplify, but I think you, you know what I mean here in terms of anti-Asian sentiments that, that are kind of being expressed here, right? And he talks about these questions he's asked, like, uh, what are you or where are you from? And suggestion that he's not a real American and so on and so forth. And, you know, despite the fact that, you know, this, this short story collection and this novella, it was all published. I'm just looking back to the start of the book to make sure I've got this right. Yeah, 2001. So, you know, this was a good 19 years years ago and yet I think this discussion is still pretty relevant today right especially in some of the especially early discussion around coronavirus in some of um, certain presidents uh, decision to portray it as the Chinese virus uh, and, and we, we know that it does trace back to you know the the virus first cases being documented in China I'm not denying that I'm not trying to make this overly political but nonetheless th there has been some anti-Chinese and some broader anti-Asian kind of sentiment um, in our country around all of this so this I, I would argue that this isn't altogether foreign or, or sort of um, something that we can't relate to or seems like a distant memory. This, this stuff still happens. This discussion is ongoing. So I'm curious about, you know, what we make of it here. Um, and there's this characterization of Danny or Daniel that, that we get on page 247, um, where we get, um, it's, it's Sheridan here who, who's discussing him. And he says, you know, I, I never liked you. Uh, he said, I, I knew guys like you at MIT. You get into schools and get these great job offers and promotions because you're minorities, but you won't help anyone except yourselves. You'll only go out, for your, out of your way for your own kind. I'm not gifted like you. I have to scramble just to be average. And you've never lifted a finger for me because you enjoy it, don't you? You enjoy seeing me fail. You're ruthless. Um, and this is a pretty sharp kind of, kind of 
stereotype um, or kind of depiction um, of how Asians might be perceived um, in, in the U.S. Uh, and again, I, while I think that some of this feels a little bit dated, some people wouldn't necessarily be as out, outspoken about this sort of sentiment now. Um, again, I don't think it's entirely foreign. I think that the, these conversations do still happen. The stereotyping do, does still happen. Um, carrying on, though, um, go, doubling back to page 242 here, um, the last full paragraph. Um, th this one reads, Over the next couple of weeks, memories visited him. Eidetic glimpses of Jenny in the bathroom, wearing his shirt, the tails lifting to reveal her splendid behind as she blow-dried her hair, of her in class, fondling him under the seminar table as she listened, quite primly, to the professor's lecture, which linked sons and lovers to Freud's Madonna-slash-whore complex, of her dropping a rolled-up note in a bottle of wine they'd just finished, a note he tried to extract with a pencil, a wire hanger, finally smashing the bottle with a hammer to read the ink running in the wine bled paper, I cherish you. I adore you. I love you. Um, the, the, this this whole paragraph here, it kind of breaks kind of form, voice, kind of character with most of the rest of the novella. Um, it's sort of quirky. Uh, it's, it's unique. It's sort of impractical. I, I'm just curious about kind of reactions to this paragraph and how the, the relationship is kind of rendered in kind of these glimpses and moments. Um, and the way we capture violence at the end of this paragraph, right? Because um, I think so much of this this novella ties back to this concept of violence in different ways. And we might not, that might not be where our head goes at first here, but th this idea of um, smashing a wine bottle with a hammer, right? That's a pretty violent image, especially if we took it in sort of a different context or took this moment completely out of context um, and sort of seems to represent passion here in a way um, and not necessarily in an entirely healthy way, right? Uh, and so I think that that's worth us just pausing to think about what, what's going on there, our reactions to it. Um, carrying on here to page 252 to 253. Um, so, uh, he goes after Sheridan, uh, Danny, that is, he goes after Sheridan when he's driving drunk. Um, and I'm curious of, of what we make of, of that choice. And, and we get this recurrence of the headbutt, right? Uh, of this headbutt that happens on, on page 253 when, um, they're sort of struggling with each other, um, in, in the water there. Um, and it, to me, it, it feels, it feels like we have to connect that back in some way to the headbutt that occurs on page 216, um, in the boxing match where it's an illegal maneuver, right? Um, and there's ways in which the, these moments are really similar in sort of escaping a dangerous situation and sort of a sense of desperation that happens in each of them. And there's obviously ways in which it's, it's very different, right? In terms of, you know, what, whether it's cowardly or whether it's sort of heroic in the way that it's captured, um, in, in sort of what it has to say about kind of unhappiness in either of these moments and so I, I'm not going to unpack that any further just because I think that it's such a rich kind of thing to read into and, and see what we make of so I'm going to leave it up to the class and class discussion to unpack that uh, further to the extent you like um, but yeah I, I'm going to leave it there I'm leaving plenty of room here for kind of open-ended you know discussion kind of dissection of um, the novella on the whole and again the, this last leg of it so please feel free to you know delve into that however you see fit in the discussion thread in addition to responding again to the the flash fiction pieces that your classmates have have submitted for this time. Uh, thanks as always for watching uh, and uh, I guess it's our last one for the week so have, have a great weekend and I'll catch you next time.